Well, let me just say, or read you what Dave wrote. After a short period of being jobbed in the opener nearly every night, despite being amongst the hottest workers at the time, with lots of internal pressure on him to cave into Watts, he stood firm, claiming he was going to become the highest paid jobber in opening match pro wrestling history until the situation of his jobbing and the reasons for it became an embarrassment for the company. And both sides settled their problems in a solution that was largely face saving for both sides. In the wake of all the problems, Watts decided to drop the light heavyweight division. So just to recap, we have a, a match of the year candidate that everybody loves. We decide we're going to spend more time on this. We created a largely this division for these two guys. We signed this talent to a really big contract. There's a change of leadership. And as this happens a lot in sports, when the new ball coach comes in, he wants his people. He wants to pick his groceries and also too, we're hemorrhaging cash. And that's what's his priority is we got to write the ship. We need to be a profitable business. Brian Pillman was not willing to let that money go. And this has become a famous story. I'll be the highest paid jobber in history. What do you remember of this? Oh yeah. He, he talked about that. He, he was, he was trying to protect his money and, uh, he was at a number that he liked. He, uh, you know, look, Brian had a lot of obligations. Mar bad marriage, it several kids. You know, he, he just had a he had a, he had a hell of an agenda, personal agenda that he had to maintain and take care of. So I was never against Brian. I was always against the junior heavyweight light. There's never been a great junior heavyweight since Danny Hodge got out of business. Hodge was the best. Because he was an Olympian, three-time national champion. He never lost in college. Every bit of publicity that you'd want as a PR guy, Hodge provided. But there was no way to follow that act. And so making a, having a junior heavyweight title or, or a uh, cruiserweight title, I hated all those damn things. I hated all those because it, 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 it brought you down a, a, a notch, I think. Uh, and I, I, I remember talking to Bill about that a lot. I said, just, it's just not going to work. These the odds are over. And, uh, you know, people want to see athleticism. They want to see movement. Uh, they want to see explosiveness. And Brian had all those things. Cowboy was just living in the past, but bless his heart, uh, that, you know, he probably had never paid anybody, including junkyard dog, a guaranteed $225,000 in Cowboy's career. So he was, uh, but he was serving those two men. He was serving his own conscience. He thought his, 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 the kid was getting overpaid. But, you know, the way, the way, the way I did it, let it go. Right. 225 grand. They're going to put a big link on the test budget. Uh, so, and you know, go pick out one of your brightest, youngest stars and, and single him or her out. <laughs> and uh, it just, it's a bad decision. And I love Bill Watt. He had a birthday here a while back, just a couple of weeks ago. He's in his 80s. God bless, he's still alive, blowing and going. Talk to him every now and then. It's always fun to talk to him. And, you know, he's, uh, he's still got his opinions. Yeah. And he, some of those old guys, you're just not going to change their opinion. 